God in His Courts No. 138, February 22, 2015 Sunday Communion Dear Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for my children and family. Thank you for my dear friends. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us. He tore the veil of the temple, the curtain in two. When you allowed this, we no longer were separated from your divine presence. Now because of the gift of Jesus we are able to appear boldly before you at the throne of grace. Lord God many people over many time periods have no idea just what your death on the cross and resurrection really did for us, so thank you. Thank you for my incredible key to the door. I still stand in awe that a small and unimportant, meaning coming from no important region or background, woman, a once deserted and destitute woman, could mean anything to you. Thank you, thank you for this gift of your presence over our lives. I stand in awe of your glory. I love you God. I love you Lord. Please have your way in me and upon my life. Let no man separate us from the love of God. Let no unseen presence and enemy of God come against us. Send angels from heaven's armies to protect us and continue to shower us with divine confirmation of your promises. On Friday while driving my children home from school, there was a massive pillar of rainbow colors jetting up into the sky from the horizon. It must have been 100 feet high in a straight column full spectrum color. As we drove in our car amazed at what we were viewing. A beautiful bald eagle flew right over our car in front of our view of the column, thank you for your signs God. I suspect that trouble is coming shortly to us and God is letting us know that he has not removed his favor or stopped the fulfillment of his love for us, your ways God are awesome. Aaron come up. I arrived immediately in front of the large golden door on God's mountain. I reached inside the pocket of my linen smock and pulled out the key. I put the key inside the lock with the closed Hebrew mum and then turned the key to the right. I saw the closed mum in silver open with a chime or ping type sound and the door to God opened to me. A bright warm light flooded over me. I felt the presence of God and I dropped immediately to my knees. I noticed that every cell in my body seemed to completely submit to God. It would be like a magnet attracting metal, the metal draws near to the magnet by force not choice. The difference is my cells even submit and recognize God their Creator. It is a humbling experience, awe-inspiring, frightening in sheer mass and power. I can't describe being loved by God and in His presence. He actually knows and counts the hairs on my head. He knows me and each of you better than we know ourselves. He created us. In one breath, one word he can speak something into being or remove it. Tears began to pour from my eyes, whether the light, gravity or emotions surrounding the presence of the Almighty, I do not know. I still couldn't form words with my lips. I just sat motionless and soaking in God's glory. One day when the earth is reshaped, God will walk amongst us. Awesome! God, Aaron, your thoughts make me joyful but you are troubled. Please speak. His voice was like rushing water, thunder and music at the same time. I knew he was glad to have me come to see him. I still remained crying, even as I write. It took some time to formulate my words. I didn't want to ramble or appear too bold or foolish. God, Aaron, your thoughts, I know them. Please speak. Me, forgive me Father. I am afraid. I am unsure and need some help. God, approach. I felt the hand of an angel to my right direct me. I walked only a few steps and the angel directed me. He put salve in my eyes so I could behold the area around God only. I looked up with my eyes first keeping my head down. I was in a type of courtroom. There were massive columns of translucent marble. The marble was of the highest quality and without flaws. I saw beautiful velvet and silk curtains of the most beautiful blue I had ever seen. Above the columns were gold pomegranates covered with persimmons, grapes and olives. I saw angelic beings surround God on His throne. 
This court was so massive that it would contain at least three football fields lengthwise and three wide, I guess 9 to 12 football fields. I was still having a hard time seeing but the throne was way up on risers. I couldn't tell how many steps led to his throne. God, Aaron perhaps you can take it to her later, speak. I was embarrassed. Me, forgive me father, this is amazing. I was quiet for a moment. Can I speak boldly? God, yes. Me, I am troubled. You have removed me to a safe place, for this I am most grateful, but I feel cut off from the world right now. My enemies still pursue and surround me. Why? They shoot rockets, I shoot only one and I am to blame for the entire war. This is unfair father. I thought you were taking us to a safe place in your quiver to remove my enemies and further your ministry in me like others. Why are you allowing the wicked to go unpunished? Why am I still not healed? God, I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green, all your fruit Aaron comes from me. Hosea 14-8, I am with you Aaron. When you call I will answer but you must call. Please know that soon the enemies of my people shall come before me in my courts. They will be held accountable for all transgressions against God's people. Me, Father this will be a while. I want to enjoy some time with my children in peace before we arrive home in heaven. God, your enemies rejoice at their small victories. Do not be dismayed when you experience their clamor. They know full well the very hour in which they are in and soon their reveling will turn to sorrow. They have cursed me and continue on a wicked course. Do not worry when their celebration gets louder. Do not envy the proud for I to know the hairs on their heads and they have been weighed and counted. Fear not Aaron. You will not suffer shame. Me, Father forgive me for sounding like a spoiled sparrow cloud nine. But if we aren't being hit by our enemies, we are experiencing your snow from the storehouses mentioned in Job, storms from the south, power outages, lack of communications and bouts of influenza. Are we out of favor? This is distracting. Please forgive my complaining. God, I told you to come boldly before me and you have indeed come boldly. Aaron, am I your father? Me, yes of course. God. Do I like your enemies and their actions if I am your father? Me, no. God, then remember this, those who lie, lack respect, plot evil, rejoice in evil destroying that which is good, mock, threaten, abuse, manipulate, use my name behind their actions, are also like thieves, idolaters, and adulterers. They will not inherit heavenly access other than the very court you are kneeling in now. Aaron I see all things done in secret, all things the enemy has done against you. You have repented for any transgressions on your behalf. You have made right your wrongs and confessed these, great is your reward as you have declared my son your savior and recognize him. You ran after me, you ran after good fruits. You run after and pursued a heart of gold, therefore you gave your best, that which beats inside you to me. Your heart is not made of stone but my love letter to you is written there, for all to see. I call you friend. At this point I am crying uncontrollably, Aaron I have heard your cries. The scales have found your enemies lacking. Their hearts are made of stone and weigh heavy. Their evil has no bounds. They even take advantage of widows, the fatherless, and the weak. Their actions will not be tolerated. During their victory they will drink from the cup of exposure. So drink they shall and be exposed. Aaron, remember you were told that storms were coming and blizzards are a blessing to you. Snow weakens your enemy's position. Snow exposes dirt and objects dark and moving. Even Israel has been given a blessing against her enemy. Sometimes these things are meant for your good, take heart. Aaron delays are often opportunity. My timing is perfect and yours is gauged by others and lacking. All that I have promised will be fulfilled. Me, thank you Father. God, 
One other thing, do not worry about prophecy. Do you not think that the prophets like Daniel, Jeremiah, or Hosea wondered when these visions would be fulfilled? Little did they know not in their lifetimes, yet they understood who I was and was not their concern only to please me? It was. So please do not concern yourself. Write down plainly that which I give you then do as I ask of you. Focus only on me, veering not to the right or left for this will take you down a wrong course. Only look to me. Who knows if I didn't remove your communication so you become completely dependent on me. Is this not better to be focused on seeing what your father would do rather than your neighbor? So Aaron, do not worry about anything. I have you at heaven's gate in the care of my angels, you and your family. You will soon be healed and your enemies far removed. Please do not forget to keep Israel in your prayers. Like you her enemies surround her. Me, thank you Father, thank you so much. God, Aaron I love you and call you my daughter and friend. You are welcome back, you have a key to my door. Dream over. Blessings Dream of Gold Relics, Number 139 February 24, 2015 I picked up four golden relics while walking. Each was an inch high. They were made of gold and lay in the powdery dirt. I picked them up and looked around me. There was a massive desert around me, dark blue sky and winds. I held the relics in my left hand. I looked toward the horizon and instantly the gold leaf appeared, then the wheat, man, and snake. First the leaf, then the wheat, next the man, and finally the snake. As I stood looking out the relics became large then went from the relics to real life scenes. With the leaf, I saw an incredible tree. I remembered what God said to me, Aaron, I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I am like a tree that is always green, all your fruit comes from me. I smiled as this tree was so beautiful, like no tree I have ever seen. I saw the tree abundant with life everlasting. It was like God was showing me his promises of a fruitful life both here and forever with him. I felt joy. I said, Thank you Father. I then moved my eyes up and to the northwest. There was the wheat relic, before my eyes the wheat overcame the desert and grew fast. I looked out and there was Jesus. His hands were touching and moved over the wheat as he walked. The motions of the wheat waved with the move of his hands. He was deep in thought. I called out to him, Lord here I am, it's me Aaron. I saw him look up with a big smile and he waved. He turned my attention to the life-sized relic of the man in gold and there I saw armies. Armies and armies were surrounding the field of wheat. I saw green armies with berets of red aiming fire toward the wheat with Jesus. I began to run toward the field. Jesus wasn't paying attention. As I ran I realized this was a vision not quite real. I saw Jesus look up at me from a distance. He took my attention to the south. A massive snake and armies were approaching. I looked back and the wheat field was gone and the desert remained. I then saw a small jewel in the desert. The armies were closing in from all sides. The snake was controlling the armies. Dream over. The Flame and Eagles, Number 140 March 1st 2015 Communion Dear Father, Thank you for another day. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for signs and wonders. Yesterday, two bald eagles were soaring over our heads. They were so beautiful and majestic. It reminded me of how our relationship with you is like a divine courtship. We fly up and down. We circle together. Sometimes I can't see you, but you are always nearby. Then there are days when the wind lifts me without my wings even needing effort to fly. Then there are days when I feel so free to soar with you, and I never want it to end. Thank you for the lift. I am heavy as my world seems to be falling apart at times. Friends depart upset, enemies ramp up, neighbors seem bitter and children rebellious. Why is life so difficult? Father, my mother is very sick. She is not well, 
and this is on my heart to intercede for her. Please, Father, have grace and heal her. I love you, Lord. For my sake please turn her heart to you. Keep us focused on you in all we do. Lord God, your Bible is my lamp, your oil is the Holy Spirit, and the flame is my hope and faith. Thank you that my heart searches and waits for you. Lord God, your ways are higher. You soar as an eagle above all of creation. Blessed is the man who soars on the wings like eagles, Isaiah 40 hours 31 minutes. I love you, Father. Aaron, come up. Today I am up on the path on God's mountain. The gold door is before me about 30 yards. I check my linen tunic for the key in my pocket, it's there. I sprint to the door, reach for my key, and unlock the door. The light is so bright I shield my eyes and drop to my knees. Ever since I have been coming through this door and have been experiencing God, my eyes have become very watery during certain times of the day. The only relief for my eyes has been to close and rest them. When I do, I've noticed a clear message from God for me. It comes as a short dream or a memory of some event during the day, which God would like at the forefront of my thoughts. Many times, I dismiss small things, yet they are items that God wants to reveal Himself through. I knelt down about seven or eight feet inside the courtroom. An angel approached and directed my head up. He put this substance like Vaseline in my eyes and I could see him and the area around him better, but I still couldn't see God. God's glory is like a force of nature, but much greater, like that of the sun, yet even greater. I cannot describe it adequately. Just know that I am very far from the place where God's throne is in the courtroom. I felt my body become both light yet energized. I had no pain, none at all. Even as I write, I feel no neck pain, and my small motor muscles in my right hand are working. This is a miracle. If only I could feel this on earth. Since my mother has been ill and has only one lung, I paid attention to my breathing. When I was younger, I had horrible asthma. I would panic at times to take a breath. It made my breathing even worse. My mom has an even worse time. Now as I am in the presence of God, my lungs are so clear. They have an immense capacity to expand. The air is light and so pure. I realize this is a lot of eyes, but I didn't know how to describe this, God, Aaron, I am here. Tears streamed down my cheeks. Me, please forgive me, Father. I feel so fantastic around you. It seems that illness or sickness has no right to be in your presence. God, this is wise and correct, but even the sick are worthy to be in my presence, Aaron. As long as you come in spirit and in truth, then you are clean. Me, thank you, Father, for this wonderful gift of your presence. When I'm here, nothing else is important. I'm ready to come soon. God, Aaron, you are holding something. Me, my trouble seems meaningless. There is much to disclose, but what is truth? God, truth is like a flame which burns. When a lamp shines, darkness hides. Who is the light of the world? Me, Jesus. God, correct. The enemy wanted the flame of truth extinguished, his light was too bright. Me, shall I study flames? God, thundering laughter rolled as the courtroom shook, it went right through me, Aaron, yes, this is good. A flame is truth, truth can hurt. There are many examples, yet it all has one meaning. Truth consumes like a burning fire. It removes darkness because few can endure it. It refines, purifies, and is holy. Me, I guess I never thought of fire as truth or exposing truth. I remember the blacksmith. He burns off the dross. God, you are a child of light, Aaron. The world hates you because there is a flame in your heart. In Song of Songs there is your heart and mine. Placed like a seal, I am over your heart. You are hated because of your love for truth the truth of heavenly things. Me, God my Father, 
I believe you're sending Jesus soon for us. What is the best way to spend my time here? What would please you? God, Aaron, allow me to carry you. Let me work. I do not require works from you, only obedience to hear me when I call. I am the burning bush. I am the all-consuming fire. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Suddenly I had a download from a dream in 2003 where I was stranded with my very young children, and a man like an angel, whom later I recognized as Jesus, carried us all across a flooded raging river at night, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. They will not set you ablaze. I recognize this scripture from Isaiah 43, I was in tears. Me, Father, why do I so quickly forget your promises as soon as I see the flames? God, it is because you come to me in your spirit. Your flesh cries out because when you return, so does the memory of your low position in body. I am real to you, but not your present reality. This is why. You are in wonder and left with no words. Your pain returns then. Me, I must lack faith for healing. Maybe the enemy causes me to forget. Well then, I give myself to you God on earth and as I am in heaven. Please heal me. Please heal my children. Please heal my mom. Please heal my friends. God, have mercy. Please show your love to your servants. Please grant us strength to have hearts forever burning for you. I love you Father. God, Aaron, in the beginning when I called you, I showed you signs. I showed you wonders. Do I not continue to do so? Look around you everywhere. Is not everything directed toward me? Is my kingdom not a pearl, yet very few find it? I am the same. I do not change. I am the same and who is and who is and who is to come, the Almighty. Therefore, Aaron, you are not consumed. I could barely write as I was so caught up in his words, I was crying. Me, Father, thank you. May your will for my life be fulfilled. I am in no position to set my course or path. You alone are worthy. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for rescuing me from the life which the enemy had petitioned for me in your courts. Thank you for finding my heart and resting your flame across it. I desire more of you. God, then it is done, and I will add unto your days wisdom too. Me, Father, is there more time? Suddenly I was removed from the court and I was taken to the courtyard in the Lord's house. I was in front of God's clock and calendar. Four massive angels guarded the four corners, as if facing compass positions. A beautiful angel approached me. I recognized this angel from before. I looked, as there were still events to come, but fewer and fewer as I looked. I saw the jubilee and I saw the seasons. Angel, Aaron, as you are heavy with the burden of earthly time, you must understand that time for you is not the same as time for God. God controls all which you see. He will also fulfill scripture so that all will remain in truth. You were given events and gauges to watch for so that your lamp remained lit. Your watching is like a pleasant aroma to God. The enemy knows his time has not yet come, but is at hand, therefore he rages. As I stood looking at the calendar, two more events lit up and passed, he appeals to weakness and is drawn to things hidden in darkness. There are weapons formed against you, but they will not prosper. Your battles will soon be over and you will enjoy a season of peace. He pointed to a season and a half ahead of me, then you will be used by God as his promises will be fulfilled. When delays occur, do not use this as a measure against you, but an opportunity. God's requirement is an obedient heart with love for him ablaze on it. Me, this is exciting. Yet I'm afraid at the same time. Angels, you were reminded that there will be signs in the heavens, the sun will become dark, and the moon be turned to blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord arrives, Joel 2:31. So you have time. Me, 
Will it come between the two blood moons left? Angel, Aaron, be content knowing the time you are in. Don't be anxious. God has told you and the Lord has spoken, there will be signs and you will know. If there is doubt right now and you are a child of God, then put your trust in Him and He will make your paths straight. Me, Angel, I see a cluster of events coming this March and April, are these those? I pointed to a grouping of script in one of the rings of the calendar. Angel, this most holy time always comes with events, calamity often follows. You were given gauges. If the Holy Spirit is telling you this, then yes, there is something to this. I am only sent as a messenger to bring you peace with good news. Aaron, you are a jewel to God. You are a living stone and a jewel in his crown, I Peter 2 to 4 5. Soon your enemies will be removed and you will have rest. The memory of them will be obliterated. Remember what the enemy did to you on your path to the promised land. He cut off those lagging to your rear, when you were tired and exhausted, he didn't fear God. Your enemies are wicked and prey upon your weaknesses, Deuteronomy 25 hours 17 minutes minus 19. Now, remember, to obey is better than sacrifice. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. God only requires you dress for the battle, putting on your whole armor. This battle is not yours, but God's. Now ride out in spirit and in truth. Then, just like Elisha, look to the hills, where does your help come from? Angel armies from heaven are there at God's command. Take courage. Take heart. Do not be afraid. Me, okay, so there is more to come, and God is in control. Angel, he smiled and laughed and the other angels smiled. Yes, rejoice. God is in control and you are his jewel. He is your pearl. The angel reached over and grabbed my hand. Dream over. After I wrote this down this morning, the Holy Spirit reminded me of when I worked with Birds of Prey back in my 20s. I volunteered at a raptor rehabilitation facility near Center Hall, PA. One of my trainers, who worked with eagles, told us the story of how a mother eagle prepares her nest and trains her baby eaglets to fly as an analogy for life. Now, I realize it was more than that, an analogy of how our walk with God is on earth. First, mother eagles build nests high above the ground, on cliffs usually. She fashions it out of sharp sticks, thorns, and branches. She makes the nest soft and cushy out of feathers or fur. Second, when the baby nears the time to leave the cushy nest, the mother eagle removes the fluff until the nest becomes so incredibly unbearable that the little eaglet is ready to begin flying. Third, the mother then baits the baby with food, the word, so the baby becomes curious about what the mother has. The baby eaglet jumps up and down to condition its legs and get its wings flapping, praise and worship, in anticipation of a meal or mom coming closer. Fourth, then the baby tries to fly. It falls from its nest while mom watches in anticipation. The baby tries to fly on its own, but it is helpless to flap its wings. Then right before it is about to splat to the ground, mom swoops in and rescues the eaglet, taking it safely back to the nest. Finally the baby becomes a young, strong eagle and it can fly with the mother and soar. Our relationship with Jesus, fifth, sadly, some eaglets decide to fly on their own, they fall to their death. In Deuteronomy 32 hours 11 minutes like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them, and carries them on its pinions. While we wait, let's look to God our Father. And like Jesus, we wait and see what our Father does only. In James 5 to 7 8. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You, too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. 
Be blessed and soar like eagles. Love, Sparrow Cloud 9, Air in God and Direction Number 141 March 4, 2015 Aaron, come up. I'm at the gold door on God's mountain. I unlock the door with my key. A bright light appears and I step through the door and into his presence. I drop to my knees. I feel the presence of an angel. With his hand on my shoulder, his other hand puts salve in my eyes. I can see around, but not directly at God. God, Aaron, you are troubled. Speak your concerns, all of them. Me, my heart raced, I could barely formulate words on my lips, Lord, I'm scared. I don't want to ever fall out of your grace and favor, God, then Aaron, because I know all things, you'll live in a glass house. Better to speak truth in whole, not in part. Me, I am not truly free, Father. As you know, I worry about losing friends, being rejected, and failure. I'm not fearless, and at night, through dreams, my past often finds me. What if you decide I'm not good enough for the dreams? What if I never realize what you've promised? What if you determine you made an error with me? My enemies gain ground, and I can do nothing. My money dwindles and I can't replenish it by my work. What if the things I was given, I wrote down incorrectly? What if pride and arrogance surface? What if I'm Jezebel? I've been accused of this. Why do others spy on me? Why not allow unstoppable success? God, you are coming, well, your son Jesus is coming, so soon. Please, Lord Father God. God, am I Lord, Father, or God? Me, laughing. You are everything. God, am I the Father in Psalm 50? Am I the I am? Am I the Alpha and Omega? With me, is there a fence around me? Do I need these four walls of the courthouse to contain me? Is there nothing too small or great for me? Is there a limit to my love and favor? or even my wrath. Me, my head bowed. No, of course not, God. You are the Father, my Father, and King in Psalm 50. You are my Creator, strong tower, and the determiner of my days. I love you. Please forgive me, Father. I empty myself fully to your will. Man is treacherous, their hearts adulterous. Even Christians rise up against me and there is nothing I can do. I have nothing to offer you, Father, nothing I have would begin to compensate for all you've done for us. All I have is my heart. God, then this I will take. Aaron, who can measure my power? Who can measure my mercy or grace? Me, no one, Lord. There is no plumb line needed for you. You are always level, constant, and true. What you speak and form with your voice, since I cannot see your lips, comes to being. God, then Aaron, when did I stop my favor, or cast you into prison? This is a curse from your enemies and has no foundation. If a curse is put forth and has no place to rest, then it cannot root and grow, or fester. Please don't allow these unwarranted curses to take a hold of you. They will cripple your walk. Come to me, Aaron, when you are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I have not abandoned you in the womb, nor did I abandon you to the grave. In one breath, I can remove your obstacles and even level the ground they walk upon. I control the wind, the rain, the floods, and the droughts. It is all designed to reconcile hearts to me. Aaron, even though you believe your heart to be treacherous, it is not. At times your thoughts can be, but not your very heart. Do not be worried or dismayed when men are jealous of my favor upon you. They are prideful and boast of things they know nothing of. They puff themselves up and thereby reduce me. I tell you the truth, they will have no ears to hear when I call. It is possible to spend time with me, but to the arrogant fools, it is impossible to please me. I will not be mocked and I will not bend an ear to hear their cries on that great and terrible day. I send storms and calamities, 
and they fail to recognize me and humble themselves. Yet after the storm and earthquakes have passed, they see the destruction and ask, where was God? Perhaps humility should take notes. Do not fret, Aaron. I am here with you. You have others around you whom I have appointed. Their reward is great and their hearts steadfast. These are small battles, which are won in the hearts of man. Just remember, these hearts are adulterous. Me, then will my friends turn against me? God, whoever turns against you, these were not your friends to begin with. Now, release your next book, Five Stones. It is time. Me, my books are stones? God, you see them as scripts, I see them as stones. Each time you write your love letters from me down, you collect information and records. You have the experience in you. It has become knit into the course of your existence. When you share this with others, it is knitted into them as well. You have written record, computer record, and printed record. You are beginning to spread the good news. This is just the infancy, as if they are in the womb. Consider it like David's satchel, you gathered stones from the riverbed, you drank from the river of life. Each stone you gathered was a jewel. Now you face the giant, the world. No one truly understands what heaven is or is not. Yet a key was given to you. Other men before you have unlocked this door, only a few have entered. You are afraid of many things. You fear pleasing me above that of pleasing man. Therefore, I have sheltered you away for this time now, Aaron. Throw the stone. You will be successful here. If I depose kings and remove them, surely I can take down a giant with a stone. Me, when will this be? God, you were shown something last night. Me, yes, Father. I had a dream, the house I lived in long ago was removed off of its foundation. There was nothing left but the basement below ground. I surveyed the area, and when I arrived, the foundation, basement was flooded. I saw several items. A chair that my kid's papa sat in. A small bear that was my son Chance's chenille, a purple bear. A gift for my daughter, a Hempstead doll named Emily, which was given to her by a church member. Then there was a knitting spool. I fished out chenille. When I turned my back, the foundation dried up. I have no idea what this means. God, before you saw the house sitting normally, what did you see? Me, oh yes, the entire house was painted off-white, everything was painted though the same color, even the window trim. God, Aaron, I will reveal this to you, do not worry. Take note of such things. Please do not worry. Give me everything. Then, above all else, trust me with it. Your children and family are mine. These dreams are mine. No enemy can take these from me. No scheme of man will prevail against you. Soon your trials will be over and you and your friends and family will celebrate with me on the streets of gold. Now, bless your friends and give them to me. Is my presence available for only one woman? I heard a thunderous laugh. I began to well up with tears and laughter. Me, of course not, Father. God, one thing, Aaron. Once your five stones are presented and one takes down the giant, you will desire to retreat like Elijah and hide. Do not, at first. After a short time, I will remove you from harm. You will not suffer shame. It is okay to protect your family from the world, but there is no need to protect them from me. You will be hidden in my quiver, safe and secure there. Me, is your quiver like Petra? He laughed. God, no, my quiver is like my quiver. If it were like Petra, then I would state it. You are loved, Aaron, you will not be in Petra, but you will see it and later rejoice. This is not now. You will see me again soon. Me, I love you, Father. God, I love you, Aaron. I found myself outside the door. An angel approached. Angel, 
do not worry when your enemies appear to advance against you, it is an illusion. You are God's delight, and His word is true. Aaron, He is within you. You will not fall, God will help you at break of day. Psalm 46 to 5, you and your friends are given Psalm 45. Also, flaming arrows are quickly extinguished. Put on your armor and stand, Aaron. Greater is he who is within you, than he who is in the world. Dream over. Love and blessings. Aaron Psalm 50, God the righteous judge the mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to its going down. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come, and shall not keep silent, a fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above, and to the earth, that he may judge his people, gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness. For God Himself is judge. Salah here, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you, I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, and all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked God says, what right have you to declare my statutes, or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? When you saw a thief, you consented with him, and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother, you slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you, and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver, whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright I will show the salvation of God. God, the eagle, the lion, and the dead snake. Number 142 March 6, 2015 Communion Dear Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the promise of victory. Father, please bless the warriors you have appointed to help us during this time. Father, many have come under attack. It is unfair. Please Father, supernaturally protect us and open up the gates. We are walled up in here. Please open the gates of heaven and unleash your strongest heavenly hosts over us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I raise my white flag and surrender all we have to you. Aaron, come up. I was up on God's mountain, in front of the forestry board next to the gold door. I felt for the key in my right pocket of my linen tunic. I looked up on the board and there was a small gold lion next to a silver eagle. Both looked like charms to a bracelet. There was a small note, you're a lion full of power who forgot how to roar. You're an eagle full of beauty but you can't seem to soar. I picked up the note and the charms and remembered back to my high school yearbook. My senior words under my photo, to one day have a heart of gold, but for now it sits on a chain around my neck until I can love everyone, including myself. Then immediately I picked up the charm heart of gold on the bulletin board. It was an exact replica of my old necklace charm. I looked at it as it sat in the palm of my hand. I heard a chime sound from some heavenly instrument and the gold heart embedded into my hand and disappeared. I felt a warmth and wave of love which could only come from God come into me.
I placed my hand over my heart. I began to cry. I looked in my left hand and the lion and eagle sat there. They seemed alive and moving but it wasn't part of my being yet. Me, God, these are charms, they are just symbols or relics. It didn't matter it still made me cry. All of a sudden I heard a song by a group called For King and Country, Run Wild. I began to cry. I listened to the words as I was driving yesterday. I had never paid attention to it before. My teenagers are much more wise than I. It seems when I'm driving I pay more attention to hidden dangers than worship music. I laugh because I never cared, or took the time because I'm always running out of time. The lyrics which struck me as if God himself was speaking to me, but don't you want to run wild, lie free love strong. You and me you're a lion full of power who forgot how to roar you're an ego full of beauty but you can't seem to soar will you return to the garden where we were first made whole will you turn to the one who can liberate your soul? But don't you want to run wild, lie free love strong, you and me run wild, lie free love strong to every soul locked in a cage in the prison of your past mistakes no, there's no time left to waste yes? You can make your great escape you're made to run wild, live free, love strong, you and me. I dropped to my knees short of the door. I reached for the key and unlocked it. It opened, I sat there with the door open and the light of God streaming over me. God, Aaron, come into my presence. I am here. An angel came to help me up. I felt feeble undeserving and in disbelief that I was in the presence of God. The angel walked me into God's court and my knees buckled as I dropped. The angel wiped salve into my eyes. God, Aaron, are you ready to roar with me? Are you ready to soar with me? Me, I couldn't formulate words with my lips to answer, God. Perhaps I should have a gold bracelet of a fur fashioned for you instead for those adornments. He laughed with a rolling thunder which literally went right through me and became part of me. I looked at the gold lion charm in the silver eagle and I smiled. Me, father, they are very beautiful but you know I don't mix my metals. I said this quietly with my head down. I heard God give a thunderous laugh. God, you are my delight daughter. I felt the charms become very warm in my hand, burning but not hot enough to hurt my skin. Well perhaps I give you both the bracelet and that which you seek. Me, father, you know me, you knit me and you know the number of my days. How can I doubt your works? I just wonder at times if I did something wrong. God, Aaron I call you friend. There are walls keeping you contained. As in Jericho I am walking around your citadels. I can remove the walls in one command or you can meet me at the gate and I will release you to me. Aaron you are free to join me. Don't stay where you are. Don't allow fear to keep you captive. Don't allow your mistakes to imprison you. Do not fear man, fear me, this is wisdom. Me, I'm not sure what you mean. Father, please illuminate what you are asking me to do. God. Rise up and take your mat with you, cripple. Aaron you are free to walk with me. You take your mat so you do not return to your past ways or mistakes. Come with me. Me, are you calling me home? God, no, your time has not come. Aaron, it is not one or the other. Soon you will be free here with me and restored. I am saying surrender to me. Let my will be done. Run with me. Rise up and run with me. I was crying as I write. Me, I thought I was tucked away in your quiver. God, Aaron, what good is a full quiver of arrows if they are never used? It's time Aaron. Me, then Father, please use me for your purposes. I surrender all I am to you. God, this is good but I call you friend Aaron. You are not my slave. In you. I have created a good work. Now come with me. I have more for you. Are you ready to take flight? Me, the lion was first. God, okay, let's roar first, then fly. Meet me at the open gate. 
I cried and cried. I woke up today abruptly to an odd sound like a trumpet sound around 6.15 a.m. Then about 45 minutes later, like something hit the side over my house. I have no idea why. There was nothing there. It woke me out of a dream. I had an extremely prophetic dream which I will download later but the last part of my dream, I was walking down a road at dusk. My son, Chance, was next to me. There was dark brown dirt on the side of the road and trees like junipers or maybe olives, they were shorter, stout and gnarled. Their roots were exposed. All of a sudden Chance reached down, as a snake was coming towards us. The snake was a diamond back and was dark brown, the color of the dirt, and black. It blended with the roots of a tree. He grabbed the snake with his left hand and bit the nape of the snake at the back of its head. The snake died instantly and Chance flung the snake into the brush, said nothing, smiled, and confidently kept walking. I couldn't believe what I'd witnessed. I cried. Interestingly enough predators of snakes kill them behind their heads at the nape. From looking at a diagram a bite to the snake behind their head cuts off air flow and stops their heart. Also notable from observing a diagram of the snake, their heart is not far from their head and fangs, yet the majority of their body is their stomach used for encapsulating their prey and rendering them prisoner. So disgusting and a great analogy about our enemies. They slither, they coil and attack. They spew venom, paralyzing their victim, rendering them helpless, then they slowly and painfully swallow them whole, all the while their victim is aware of its helpless state, yet is unable to fight it. Then they are consumed and digested whole. Yuck! So evil! Anyway I don't care for snakes but they look great on boots and purses, giggles. Blessings! Aaron God! Two Sparrows and a Crown Number 143 March 11, 2015 Communion Dear Father, thank you for another day. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your blessings. Father, my injury claim was close today. Recompense for the accident didn't come. Now there will be court and no medical attention. Father, you have kept me for your purposes and for a time such as this. But for someone living under rope in heavens, I do not feel the anointing of your healing over me. Please Father, help me. Please show me what it means to roar like a young lion when I feel like an old toothless lion. Help me soar like an eagle when I can only dart about like a sparrow. You gave me a very clear, definitive scripture today, Proverbs 2010. Differing weights and differing measures. The Lord detests them both. Then would this Father, please see it in your heart to slam down my enemy on the mat, I picked up, and grant us time before a judge and a reversal of this decision. How do I roar and soar with you? How can I? I cannot. My head hangs low and my discouragement is my mantle. Please forgive me in advance, as it is difficult to see you working sometimes. Father, I have dressed for battle. I prepared my weapons and my horse. I have gone to the battlefield to stand. The sun is rising to mark a new day of battles. I look to the distant hills to see where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. God, you have called me friend and daughter, please go before me in these battles and grant us a victory. Father, I know who my enemies are. I know that because I love you, they hate me. I know of our final victory when you vindicate all of your children, but this is a battle, five converging, I can't see the hills. I have no choice but to trust fully in you in all of this. I will not surrender my white flag to the enemy, but I lift up my flag and surrender to you. Please deliver my victory soon, Lord. In Jesus' name. Aaron, come up. Again today I was right at the golden door on God's mountain. To my right was the forestry board. In front of me were two charms, one was a pair of sparrows in silver, the other was a crown of gold. I laughed again to myself, nodded at the intricate amazement of God. There was a note attached, Aaron, 
Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. King's daughters were among thy honorable women, upon my right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ephur. Aaron, I am enthralled by your beauty. I began to cry. I looked at the two ornaments or charms and they sank into the palm of my hands. They became part of me. Me, O oh father, am I such a double-minded daughter? You have never left me. Even when you are quiet, you are still right here. Thank you. I wanted to keep the note and take it home, well, my earthly home especially. I know in heaven I will recall all things without struggling to search my old memory banks. I took a big sigh. I placed the note into my pocket and exchanged it for the key. I turned and unlocked the golden door with a mum. A bright light struck me. I forget just how incredible the power and intensity of this door opening every time is. I am just amazed every time. I felt the angel bring me in, and I knelt to the floor. He put the salve into my eyes so I could see a bit more clearly. I still couldn't see the area of God's mercy seat. It was too far away and intense to behold. God, Aaron, you are so easily troubled. What ails you? Me, I stammered again with my lips to speak. Dash 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 father, it seems my enemies are closing in on me. How can I get anything done when I am overwhelmed and distracted? I spent many hours on the defensive. God, take the offensive. Aaron, where are you? Me, your courts. God, who resides here? Me, of course you do. God, then take heart. What do I think of sparrows? Two can be purchased for less than a penny. Aaron, if I call you as a queen who is adorned in gold of a fur, then what does this mean? Is a queen wearing gold worth anything to the king or her father? Me, yes. God, surely her gold crown is worth more. Then why do you worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body? What have I said? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds Aaron, yes, even the ravens, do they sow or reap? Yet are they not fed? Now consider the lilies. Are they not beautiful and well dressed? If I have called you my friend and my daughter, then do I not take care of you? I began to cry. I was ashamed of myself. Me, O oh Father, please forgive me for my worry. Please forgive my impoverished thinking. God, Aaron, I will not condemn you, only your enemy's actions, though feeble, and your own tongue hold you captive. Now, surrender this all to me. Your tongue is a part of your body, so keep this holy. Me, I prefer I give it to you, at times my tongue is treacherous. God, he chuckled, then best to keep that sharp arrow in your quiver. Now I speak of your tongue. You carry arrows, what are you waiting for? Me, forgive me, I do not know what you are saying. God, really? Immediately my very vivid dream downloaded into my head, I had this three nights ago, maybe four. Me, yes, you are showing me the dream. God, Aaron, what did you do in this dream? Me, I pursued the enemy, set a barricade and then I waited. When it came out, I took it down with one shot. God, very good, very good. Aaron, you are in the middle of a battle. It is okay when you're in the valley to draw an arrow and point it. Shoot when I say shoot. Me, Father. I'm hesitated, God, speak. Me, I thought I would look to the hills for help. Aren't the angel armies there? God, yes. Understand this, when I say prepare your fields, that means prepare completely, until the only thing left is me. Remember, the army went down to the battle, fully trusting me for the victory, but prepared for any event. Me, you are right, dressed for battle means ammunition, arrows too. God, 
many can fall at the threat of just one. Consider David, Aaron. He drew five smooth stones, yet only one was needed. His faith was enough. The meek bring the proud low, just when all seems lost. I tell you it's not. Please understand, I know the beginning. I know the comings and goings of your enemies, and I have written the final outcome. Please trust me to carry you and deliver you the victory. Me, God, there have been many attacks on me today. What is happening? It looks like all is lost, God. God, I understand how this appears, but I have you, Aaron. The enemy, all of your enemies, will be removed. Now give me your enemies. Do you want to be free? They hold you captive. Give them into my courts, Aaron. Immediately I had a visual of each enemy. I saw them shuffle into God's courts, single file. They were in shackles. Each chain consisted of things held against them. Each one knelt before God. It was like a movie within the courts of God. It was a later time. I saw people who worked behind the scenes who surprised me, and I saw those I didn't recognize. God, now Aaron, let me be the judge here. Let me hear their pleas. Let me render a verdict and serve justice, or would you like to sit here? Me, oh no, God. Please, you do this. The courtroom changed. God then sat on his judgment seat. The colors and magnitude of the court changed. I can't describe it, but it was different. God, Aaron, I have you. Do not worry. You hold a key to my door, day or night. Come to me when your burden is too great. Please don't fear, you will not suffer shame. You are my daughter, and I call you friend. Dream over. Several things happened to me today. Signs started with five deer walking through the woods in the snow. Then a group of five crows made a horrible racket on the other side of the property. I opened my window and prayed out loud. Four crows tried to fly into our backyard at me. It was as if they had hit a wall and they flew 90 degrees upward, all in the same spot. The last crow flew above them and over our home. I felt I needed to pray over our property and use oil on all of our doors, windows, plumbing, communications, computers, phones, gaming devices, and TVs. Then I went to God in communion and prayer. I felt the Holy Spirit warning me of an open door. It was revealed to me, so now I am going off to battle. It involves my children and Facebook. A backdoor attack. My daughter is a victim of cyberbullies, which has now carried over to the school. The dream I had a few nights ago, I was hunting in the woods on a beautiful winter's day. The sky was deep blue and the sun very bright. There was a foot of snow on the ground. I was wearing all white. I looked like the girl in Hunger Games, but in all white. I was hunting with a bow and arrow. I don't know exactly what I was hunting, but I was looking everywhere for my prey, as I walked quietly and alert with my bow and arrows ready to shoot. Up ahead in a clearing I saw a white snowshoe rabbit. It appeared to be eating something. I seemed a bit confused because there was nothing for a rabbit to graze on. I thought, I love rabbits. They are so soft and innocent. I quickly dismissed it and began to walk by. Just then it turned to look at me. I saw this beautiful, gentle bunny, white even, with blood dripping from its mouth. It had fangs. I quickly jumped. I was in shock. It took off running and I ran like the wind after it. I chased it for quite some time until I saw it disappear into its hole. It kept popping its head out to mock me. I decided then to build a circular ring of large rocks surrounding the hole. I left only one opening. I then ran back about 100 yards and hid behind a group of white birch trees. I then propped my arm up with a bow pulled back, I waited. It was hilarious. I waited only a couple of minutes. This bloodthirsty, innocent rabbit still had a blood stain on its white coat. Its face had turned hideous and demonic. 
it seemed to laugh at the prospect that I had given up. It was too busy looking above the rocks to even notice I had created a wall. It hopped directly to the rock wall opening. I took a deep breath, and with precision, from 100 yards, I took it down with one arrow right in its neck. I heard a horrific scream and growl, a death rattle, and then it was gone. I ran up to it to make sure it was dead. Then I ran off to find what I was originally hunting for. Quite a dream.